one of the things I just had to ask you is, uh, when we were speaking earlier, you said that you're quite an Anglophile, and I know you were here a few years ago to do uh, Broken News, a, a sitcom over here. Mm. Um, what a lot of people don't know is that that led to an appearance at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Yeah. Can you tell us a little bit oh, about that? Was, that was fantastic. Um, what happened was um, I, I happened to get a great agent in London, um, and I got this series the first time out that I went up for anything, and it was really exciting because what I loved about it, it was taking the piss out of local news. And in Los Angeles, we have these great, horrible news shows where, where a fellow will come on and say, well, tonight, you know... A cat went missing. I mean, there's absolutely no content. And then, and then the other guy will come on and say, well, so when did the cat disappear? You know, and then a whole hour will go by, and it's all about something really banal, really yeah. horrible. And that's local news. So I thought this was so hilarious, because every single episode was all about, well, you know, if the doctor landed right now, then what, what do you think the doctor would say, Joe? Well, you know, Joe, since the doctor hasn't landed, I'm not really sure what he would say. But once he gets off that plane, I presume he's going to give us an answer. All filler. It's all filler. It's all just a bunch of BS. You know, it's just, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, Diary yeah. of the mouth. Yeah. Anyway, um, when I did that series, I thought it was a wonderful experience. And then after that, um, my agent said to me, uh, do you want to do some UK theatre? And I just gotten off a really rough uh, experience in US theatre doing um, the US premiere of What the Night is For, which is a Michael Weller play that actually Gillian Anderson debuted in the UK. Mm. So I made the US debut and as the lead, and it was a really, really extensively difficult, difficult, difficult role. Bipolar, crazy, you know, just a hard, hard role. And I just had finished that, and I had a very bad taste in my mouth about serious theater. So I was offered a serious piece yeah. <laughs> at the Edinburgh Festival. I thought, Edinburgh Festival, hmm, maybe I should just, you know, chin up and do it. So I did it, and it was, uh, it was not the best experience of my life, but it was incredible as far as meeting people and having a beautiful time. Edinburgh is one of the most beautiful cities in the world, yeah. and the people are so amazing, and the experience of being at the festival and doing what you love to do and going to see shows that you would never see before, again in your life. I mean, I'm never going to see Russian... Um, midget acrobats at four in the morning. No, uh, no. I'm going to only see that in Edinburgh. I'm never going to see, you know, um, a comedy show consisting only of two women and a glass of water. I mean, that's Edinburgh. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and for me, having, you know, done theater since I was, you know, three years old, I found that amazing that I was suddenly amongst a bunch of, a bunch of clowns and I just loved it. And that the clowns were the acceptable norm. Yeah. The, the, the suits were not the norm. It was us clowns, us performers. And yeah. I thought, and, and this was our territory and our realm. And this is where we were, we were completely acceptable and, and we were the king. A guy came up to me about your age and he said, y y here, I want you to meet my son, Marcus. Yeah. <laughs> Marcus Ivanova. No, I'm not kidding you. And I thought, wow, this is really pervasive. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't end. It's, and it's, it's not, it, it doesn't feel to me like um, when I was a kid, you know, looking at, when I worked with Walter Koenig or any of these guys, or Shatner. I mean, I, I did T.J. Hooker with Shatner back in God knows whatever. I didn't realize the intensity of, of, of the loyalty of science fiction. Yeah. But now, um, I have a really, really high regard for it. Good. And again, I think part of that is, as you said, because it did have, it wasn't just black and white, there was real sort of depth mm -hmm. to the... Yeah. Uh, the story and the Absolutely. characters and the arcs and everything it was really fantastic and, and it's fantastic that it's so well uh, well loved today okay anyone who's seen your resume uh, will know you're so much more than just an actress um, you uh, one of the things you've done uh, outside of acting is music you've actually released a couple of uh, CDs I believe yeah I, I actually did one in, um, I did uh, area 51 in Scotland with um, uh, a really great um, young uh, guy who was working with Sir Cameron McIntosh that really didn't go anywhere. My first CD I did with um, Celine Dion's producer, um, Michael J, and that actually kind of went somewhere. Then I started doing it just for the fun of it, and I ended up working with Bill Mooney, who was in Babylon 5 with me, and he's an amazing musician. He has many, many bands. The Generators are one. He plays guitar like you wouldn't believe. He hooked me up into a, a music situation where we would all get together and make you know, albums, and so that's where I really started getting involved with the writing of the songs and, and the producing of the songs, but 
Um, I've made six albums so far, and I'm, I'm not pretending to be a singer, by the way. I just love to write music, and I like to put sounds together. I had the Illin Pipe player from Braveheart. I had the um, Los Angeles uh, opera singers come in, coloratura singers come. I, I, I've had a lot of people that uh, come in to make a very unique sound in my albums. Once again, I'm not pretending that I can sing, but I do make nice music. Oh, good. Well, I'd love to hear some at some point. Yeah, I, will, we'll... give, I will give you a copy. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> One of the perks of the job there. Thank perks you. of the job, there you go. And uh, talking of perks of the job, it's a little bit cheeky, but um, I was looking through your IMDb earlier today, and it uh, turns out that you were in one of my all-time favourite TV shows as a young child. Uh, when I was a young child. Oh, you know, boy. Uh, Let I think me guess, like, uh, A-Team? Or absolutely. Or so? Absolutely <laughs> A-Team. And um, I have bought a Holy lot moly, of okay. the DVD here, I'm season three. Have to sign that. If you wouldn't mind, that would be fantastic. Not Thank you. Uh, I got a little bit on Mr. T's face. Okay, Claudia, well, thank you so much for, oh, uh, for your time. You I really so enjoyed so nice speaking to you. To you. Yeah. Um, so check it out on thosevideoguys.tv and we're on Twitter all the time, at thosevideoguystv. Claudia, thank you again. It's been the a pleasure. The clips I showed you guys are awesome. And once you go onto there, you can link them to all sorts of really crazy stuff like the other literal videos, which are really funny. If you want a good laugh, total eclipse of the heart. Just, I mean, if you're in a bad mood, Bonnie Tyler, bad literal video, you can't go wrong. You can't well, go wrong. Well, Claudia, thank you very much, and we'll see you guys on the show next time. Bye.